As the 20th century dawned, the heyday of railroad's second building boom was ending. A vast network of rail lines tied the nation together. But it was an overbuilt, confusing mix of too many companies, too much track, and too much greed that was destroying the industry. The answer was consolidation, and Edward H. Harriman had the brains and the ability to make it happen. Harriman was a legendary railroad owner whose ingenuity and foresight would single-handedly save the railroad industry. He started with the Union Pacific. I think Harriman was, was actually a genius in many ways. Uh, I think he, he, he did a lot for rebuilding the Union Pacific. The very first thing he did when he came on the property was he visited the property. He spent time on the property. And he even, they even pushed his private car ahead of a locomotive so he could see what the property looked like. And he had a vision, and, and it was a good one, because up until that time, most of the equipment was tiny. The locomotives were not very big. The cars really didn't handle a lot of tonnage. And the, of course, the track conditions at that time was such that all of it needed upgrading. So Harriman's vision was to put in heavier rails, straighten out the railroad, which he did. They rebuilt the Union Pacific those first few years, but what they did is they put in heavier rail, they bought heavier locomotives, and they built bigger cars, all on this basis that the West was going to develop even more, and it did. And Harriman made, made a lot of money for the company. Other railroads had to take the same measures Harriman instituted on the Union Pacific in order to stay competitive. Railroading was entering a new era, slimming down and becoming lean and competitive. The height of railroad trackage was in the second decade of the 20th century. With the rise of the automobile and trucks, the railroads began to decline. Less track, fewer cars and locomotives. Then came the era of the diesel engines and railroading was never the same again. The various yards and shops all over the country started shutting down because diesels could operate much farther. They didn't have to have all this water. Uh, coal bins weren't needed. So diesels really changed the way the railroads thought and worked. Instead of having hundreds of shopmen, you only needed a few. Uh, you didn't need big facilities. And railroads sold off a lot of property, got rid of it because they just didn't need it. Diesels don't have to go. Uh, 100 miles and rewater and all that. Now they can go thousands of miles and get refueled. And so diesels change the way the railroad work. Hi, I'm Bill Ambrose. If you like this video, subscribe so we can bring you more programming from our studio. Thank you for subscribing.